Okay, so we have our uh, piece ready for handles here. You can see uh, how I did my uh, brass bolsters. Can't see any pins in them at all. It just brass disappears into the brass. And I showed you how I do uh, some of my uh, vine file work. So now we're ready for handles. And uh, I'm just making this piece to uh, go on my website or take it to a show uh, and kind of demonstrate how I do things. This one is not for an order, so it'll be for sale. So I'm debating what type of handle to put on it. Uh, initially I was thinking I would do uh, either some buffalo horn or some black micarta just because I think the black and the brass just look so classic together. But I uh, do happen to have a really nice set of uh, mammoth ivory scales that I'm thinking uh, just going to go really nice with this. So I'm thinking uh, that's, some, that's just some beautiful bark ivory, woolly mammoth tusk. So uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. Now, it is kind of tricky doing a handle like these because you are fitting between the two bolsters. So it's really uh, sometimes can be difficult to get them trimmed to exactly the fit you want with no gaps and sometimes you'll tend to okay we need to grind it down just a little bit more and you take off too much and it doesn't work so I'm gonna give it a try and uh, you can follow along with me now since the uh, the length is so critical on these and you know this may not be absolutely perfectly perpendicular on these uh, square ends of the bolsters um, could be some slight difference there so what I'm going to do is make a little cardboard template to work from and use that as a template for cutting my uh, my mammoth scales Okay, so what I want to do is make sure I've got a nice square edge of this cardboard. These manila file folders work wonderful for so many things. But I've got that butted up against that bolster real good. And while I hold that up there nice and square, I'm going to trace out outline of this handle see it's just a shade long so I'm going to trim that paper to where it's just just a nice snug fit and I'm going to 
also going to mark this. This is going on side number one. And in reality, I will cut my scales just a little bit long so I can grind them down with the disc sander just a little bit at a time until I've got just a really good tight fit. But this will be my starting point. That's pretty close. And that should work pretty well for either side. Looks like uh, I got everything pretty square. So that's what I'm going to use as my template to cut my scales. And I said, uh, I'll cut them just a little bit long because I want to grind them to fit. And hope I don't screw it up and waste $100 worth of mammoth ivory. And I also want to look, what do I want to cut off of here? This one has a little, little bitty chip right there, so I know I want to cut that off. And I've got room to cut about an inch off of each one. Mammoth Ivory is pretty easy to work with. Uh, main thing you got to remember is just don't get it hot. If you get it too hot, it will crack. Either now or later, but it will crack. And reality, any natural material likely will crack over time. If you ever look at any uh, antique knife, you know, 100 years old, it's got a bone handle or ivory handle, you know, it's almost, I don't think I've ever seen one that wasn't cracked. So I'm going to cut off this end, And I'm going to leave a little extra here on this end just so I can square it up nice. And I'll cut outside this line just to give me a little uh, wiggle room there too. So let's cut them off. Nothing stinks like cutting ivory. Got me a couple of nice little cutoff pieces. Make a maybe make a pair of earrings or a couple of pendants out of those. Okay, the first thing I want to do is make sure I get a nice 
square end on this. And then I'll shorten up the other end until it fits. So let's see where we are. Okay, we're not quite square. So I need to take off a little bit right here. As I said, you want to work slow don't want to get this ivory hot. And just feel it as you go. If it's hot, stop, let it cool. Okay, we're pretty square there. So now we want to start fitting these to the handles. So if I go up, butt it up against that, nice and square. Also at this point, you remember I marked these tangs one and two. There's a stamp on them. So I know this this side here is side one that I'm fitting against. So I'm going to mark that scale one, and that's the front. That's, that's what this process is going to be. Just grind a little bit, check your fit, see how much more you need to take off until you get a good fit. So again, I'm going to stop the video while I keep doing this and then I'll uh, come back when we've got them shaped. Okay, we've got our uh, scales cut to length. Got a nice snug fit. So now we just have to uh, drill them for our pins. Now this does have kind of an unusual pattern. I've got two quarter inch holes that I'm going to use uh, mosaic pins in. And I've got four one eighth inch holes that I'm just going to put brass pins in to go with the brass bolsters. And I've got my mosaic pins I'm going to use in a quarter inch hole. Um, I don't remember, I think they call this a morning star pattern. Now some people drill their holes in their tangs a little bit larger than the pins, which isn't a bad idea, but these I did drill one quarter inch, so they're kind of a tight fit. What I'll usually do is just slightly bevel the end of the pin, put a little uh, shoulder on it so it 
it'll go in easier but this one's good and snug so now the trick is we need to make sure that our pins holes in the handle are exactly lined up with the uh, with the tang it goes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill my holes right through the tang and through the scale using my tang as a guide and I'm going to put a little tape on the back side of or on the front side of the scale just to help keep it from chipping out when I drill it okay I'm going to drill my eighth inch holes first I'm going to drill a couple of those and put um, some temporary pins in there just to hold everything in place another thing you want to watch about here is this is rounded so you don't want to be drilling at an angle and one little trick I've learned is I've got a little bubble level and I know my table is level so I'm gonna put that on my tang while I'm drilling it and I can rock this back and forth and tell when I'm level Again, you want to go slow and easy because heat is the enemy of, of ivory. Make sure you got a good sharp bit. Okay, I've got my first hole. So I'm just going to put a temporary pin in there just so nothing moves. I'll pin that one. Now that scale is not going to move anyway. Now I'll drill my next two. Okay, we've got our eighth inch holes, so now we need to drill our quarter inch holes. Ultimately, we want these pins to be a nice snug fit, but we don't really want to have to drive them in, because then again you run the chance of uh, cracking the ivory. Watching my bubble level, make sure I keep that level and I'm not rolling that handle one side or the other. It's always a kind of hold your breath operation working with mammoth tooth or mammoth ivory 
because it's just a, you know such expensive material. This did chip out just a little bit here, but we're going to have to grind this down just a little bit anyway, so we'll be good there. So we've got one side ready to go. So now we'll do the same thing on side two, just using the handle tang as our template. Okay, we've got everything drilled. Now one thing I like to do just to make sure everything's in perfect alignment is while I've got both scales fitted up, I'm just going to manually run a drill bit all the way through it. it. Might remove any burr I might have, but it also tells me this is perfectly aligned. And the danger you run into, especially with relatively brittle materials, is if you've got the hole drilled a little bit askew on one side as compared to the other, when you put your pin in, it can torque it and either make it a very difficult fit or in worst case even crack your handle material. So it's important to uh, double check, make sure you got everything perfectly straight and aligned and running a bit through manually is just a good way to check that. And I'll do the same thing with the eighth inch holes. Okay, we're ready to glue our handles up. I've already cleaned everything up with uh, rubbing, rubbing alcohol to make sure there's no grease on it. I'm going to use the uh, Loctite E120HP. Um, some tests were done on one of the knife forums a while back, testing all the popular epoxies, and the, uh, this turned out to be one of the best. Um, I often do use uh, the DEVCON two-ton also, um, but this is a little stronger, uh, it's got a little, a little longer curing time. Um, the epoxy is really more as a water barrier than anything, more than adhesion, uh, especially on something like this. This is a snug fit between the bolsters. It's going to have uh, six pins in it, uh, so there's really not going to be any chance of the handle sliding off that way. I mean, it would have to be something that would pull it just absolutely perfectly straight off, and honestly, once all the pins are in, I doubt you could do that even without any epoxy on it. So again, the epoxy is more just a... a a water barrier, a watertight seal between the tang and the scales. So I've got everything laid out here ready to go. Got my pins cut. Now these will be kind of snug. I will have to tap them in. And some more of my trusty uh, manila folder here to mix my epoxy on. One of the neat things about the uh, Loctite 120 HP is that you've got this neat little dispenser that automatically dispenses the right mix because it's not a, it's not a true one to one mix.
you don't want to put a real thick layer on here. Actually, it's a, you get better results with a thin layer than you will with a real thick layer. Okay, this is side number one. Got just enough of my eighth inch pin sticking through there to act as a guide for the second handle scale. glued up and did not crack okay we have it all glued up I want to clean up any excess I have here with a little rubbing alcohol joint right here between the bolster and the blade is one place you really want to make sure you don't have any uh, epoxy oozing out because that's kind of tricky to clean up afterwards. And although it's not necessary in this case, really, because it's pinned down pretty darn snug, but I'm going to put a couple of clamps on it anyway just to help it along a little bit. You don't really want to use a whole lot of pressure, because just like using too much epoxy as a deterrent, um, Putting too much pressure on it can also be a deterrent because you're actually squeezing the epoxy out of where it needs to be. So 
So I've got a couple clamps. As you can see, I've got a little bit of pin sticking out both sides, which is fine because we're going to grind those down flush. And we're going to let this cure for uh, overnight at least on this uh, octite epoxy. Then it's just going to be a matter of uh, grinding things down flush, grinding this handle down a little bit uh, here at the bolsters, grinding our pins flush, and giving everything a nice final polish. Okay, we've got our uh, handles all glued up and pinned down. So now I need to uh, grind these pins flush and I need to grind the handles flush with the bolsters. Which we're going to take off a little bit of the bark layer here, uh, but that's kind of unavoidable. I'm going to start off with a coarse belt. 60 grit just to knock off the heavy part. careful here not to hit my brass that I've already got finished. being careful not to get this not to get this hot which is another reason I'm using the coarse belt take an awful lot of material quickly taking about as uh, close as I dare with the power tools so it's uh, it's all hand sanding from here to get everything flush and smooth I 
I'm going to start with 220 grit and I'll go down to about uh, 600 grit and then buff it. Okay, we're just about uh, finished with quite a bit of hand sanding here. I uh, went to 220, 400, 600, 800 grit, and finishing up here with a little 4 aught steel wool. And it's uh, coming along quite nicely. It's a really beautiful piece of uh, mammoth bark ivory. So uh, now we'll do a little polishing and see what we've got. Okay, for most of my handle materials, I'll finish up with just a loose cotton wheel and a little pink no scratch compound. Here's our nearly finished product. Still need to etch my maker's mark on it and uh, put a little Renaissance wax on it to really buff it out. But uh, overall, turned out pretty good. And you can see the brass bolsters have shined up very nicely, no visible pins. See my mosaic pins and the brass pins in the uh, mammoth ivory handle. And our file work. So once again, this is Mike Carter with Carter Custom Knives. Thanks for watching.